Good morning, good morning. God bless you. God bless you. Welcome to Real Talk, bringing God's word. God bless you. God bless you this morning. I'm going to give a, uh, some time for some people to come in this morning. Thank you so much for being on this live. Um, we're here to teach God's word, to teach on prayer. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you this morning. Thank you, God. We magnify you. I'm going to tag a few people, which I believe I already did earlier. So we're just going to wait for some people to come in. Just thank God for this morning, for waking us up in our right mind. We thank God for his goodness and his mercy. We thank God for what he's doing and what he's going to do. Um, we just thank, I just thank him. I just thank him this morning. Um, give me one second and I'll be right back. Trouble with shoulder and back pain? Try Zim's Max Freeze Liquid that offers 16 percent menthol. From natural cooling liquid to machine. God bless you guys. God bless you guys. God bless you guys. I had to take care of something really quick. So thank you for being patient. Thank you for being on this live today. Uh, God is good. I'm just waiting for a few more people to come in because God woke me up this morning really, 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 really early. And, you know, I was like, oh boy, because I didn't know what he wanted me to talk about, but he woke me up early this morning and he wanted me to talk about hatred and jealousy that's in the body of Christ. And let me tell you, he was not playing. He, I was up for at least an hour and he was showing me some things and giving me some things about hatred and jealousy. I'm trying to get off of the jealousy, but he's not allowing me. God bless you, um, Pastor Michael. God bless you, Elizabeth. He's not allowing me to get off. So I'm going to have to be obedient and stay on what he wants me to stay on. So um, I'm going to pray for us this morning before we get started. I'm going to go ahead and get started. And those who come, they come. And, and if um, they can go back and listen listen to the word that God has um, has set up but I try to get off of the um, I really try to get off of the the jealousy and God took me back woke me up this morning and told me he want to talk about the haters and the jealousy the hatred of people and there's hatred there no matter how they say it, no matter how they do it, there's some hatred there. Because God would not wake me up and tell me that for no reason. He woke me up at three. And usually usually I sleep through the night unless he wakes me up. But he did wake me up this morning about the spirit of um, hatred and jealousy. It, it, it's bad. But God, we just thank you this morning. We thank you for those that are on this line this morning. We bless you, Father God. We thank you for each and every person. Father God, creating us a clean heart, renew a right spirit within us, Lord. Pour your love upon us, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Give us new love this morning, Father God, that we may love our enemies and deal with our enemies, oh God. We just thank you, Father, for what you're doing. I just thank you for those that come on this line. I pray that you double bless them, Lord. Double bless them, Father God, for just coming in and wanting to learn and wanting to hear the truth about prayer and the truth about witchcraft and truth about the things that are really going on because some of us are not aware of what's going on, Father God. And I thank you that I'm even learning more, Father God, about it, Father, in Jesus' name. We just thank you. Father, I thank you for them, Lord God. I pray that you bless them. I pray that you protect them. Psalms 91 over them, Father God, this morning, oh God. Father God, we just thank you this morning for what you're doing and what you're going to do, oh God. I'm going to read this little prayer over us. 
Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for being able to see and hear this morning. We bless you because you are for a a forgiving God and, and, and an understanding God. We have done so much. You have done so much for us and you keep us and blessing us. Father God, forgive us this day for everything we have done, said, Father God, thought or was not pleasing to you. We ask you, Father, to forgive us. Forgive us this morning. Please keep us safe from all danger, harm. Keep us Help us to start this day with a new attitude with plenty of gratitude. Father God, let us make the best of each and every day, Father, to clear our minds so that we can hear from you. Let us not whine and whimper over things we have no control over, God, and let us be the best response when we, put, we are pushed beyond our limits, Father God, in the name of Jesus, when people push us, Father God. I pray, Lord God, that you help us, Father God. Help us, Lord Jesus. Let us not whine and whimper, Father. Continue to use us, God, to do your will. Continue to bless us that we may be a blessing to others. Keep us strong that we may um, help the weak. Father God, keep us lifted, uh, lifted up that we may have words of encouragement for others. We pray for those that are lost and can't find their way. We pray for those that are misjudged and misunderstood, Father God. We pray for those who don't know you intimately, Father God. We pray for those that don't believe, Father God. But we thank you that we believe, Father God. But I thank you this morning that we do believe, Father God. Father God, I believe that God changes people and God changes things. My prayer, Father God, bless everyone that's coming in. God bless you this morning. God bless you this morning. Father God, we pray for all our sisters and brothers, for each and every family member, Father God, in their households. Father God, we pray for peace, love, joy in the homes that they are out of debt. <clears throat> everyone is out of debt and all their needs are met. <clears throat> excuse me. Excuse me. I pray that every eye that reads and knows that there is no problem, circumstances or situation greater than God. We pray, Father God, that we are blessed beyond measure this day. We pray that the the sales and the work of our hands be blessed by you. May may we be blessed. May we bless you in the, the our daily work every day. We thank you for your love and abundant blessings we have for um, you have for us today, tomorrow, and every day. And we give you thanks, Father God. Every battle is in your hands for the fight, and we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. We thank you this morning. We thank you this morning. And yes, before we leave um, this morning, I will be praying and canceling neg negative words against us. That's something I will do every single day. But I want to talk about what God has given me this morning. He woke me up this morning. <clears throat> he woke me up early this morning at three o'clock. And the first word he gave me was because um, I really didn't know what he wanted to do today. And he wanted me to talk about hatred and jealousy. And here we go back to this. I'm trying to get get um get uh, off of this, but he won't let me get off of this. So that means there's a problem. <laughs> there's a problem, and we need to deal with it. And those that want to um accept it and and repent, God bless them. And those that don't want want to stick stay with it, that's fine. You're holding up your own blessings. Nobody is exempt from jealousy. And I'm also going to give scriptures because he also gave me scriptures on it. So I'm also going to um, deal with the, with scriptures on hatred. Nobody is exempt from jealousy or hatred from others. We are all subject to its cruelty and during our life. It can hurt even more to have a friend who is a, who is jealous because the actions and emotion expressions of jealousy person are not kind of loving. When it comes from a friend or a loved one, we take it more personally. However, you need to understand that their jealousy is caused by their own underlining issues and it's not your fault. Most, most jealousy is rooted in feelings and, and, and inac inadequacy. The person sees something in you or another person that makes them feel that they aren't as good. It could be real or imagined, but the feelings of inadequacy are a project through negative thoughts or actions. Jealousy emerges as a reaction or solution for those feelings of inadequacy. For example, a woman may be jealous of her, her friend who makes more 
who makes more money, has a nice car and desire uh, designer clothing rather than being happy for the for her friends success. This woman feels that her in, uh, income car and clothing are inadequate. Bless you, everyone. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, Pastor Robert. God bless you. Thank you for being on here this morning. Rather than being happy for her friend's success, this feelings <clears throat> that are are um income, car, and clothing are inadequacy by com comparing. She may feel like a failure in life because her success is not even on the same scale as her friend. And they graduated at the same time with the same degree. So it doesn't matter. You can go to college, be a lawyer, and, and she could be a lawyer, but for some reason she still doesn't like the fact that there's something about you. God bless you, Cynthia. Good morning. Good morning. There's something about you that bothers bothers that person. Instead of dealing with these undermined feelings of adequacy, the jealousy turns into little digs and insults when they are together. I don't know if you guys ever experienced that, but I have. The jealousy friend makes comments such as it must be nice to get a new car or every two years. And wow, that purse must have uh, cost enough to feed a small village for a month. Those comments that are coming out of jealousy may make the jealous friend feel better momentarily, but they don't address the under, underlining feelings of inadequacy, and thus the jealousy will continue, continue, and the problem is until the problem is addressed. If you don't address the problem, it's going to continue. And I know there's people even on this line that's dealing with people like that, and because you've been friends with them for a long time, you 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 accept it. But jealousy is a dangerous thing. It's dangerous to be around someone who's jealous. Even if the jealous person begins making more money or gets a better car or clothing, she will find or he will find a new friend to be jealous towards or something else. With the existing friend to be jealous about because the adequacy is the driving force. Jealousy is a powerful force. However, there are ways for a person to handle a jealous person that can be disarmed. A jealous person or prevent oneself from being exposed to jealousy. There is not one size fits all situation solution to dealing with jealousy and hatred. Each situation is unique and needs to be handled accordingly. Be, below are uh, there's some tips that we can use. Okay, here are some tips that we can use how to deal with jealousy and hateful people. Delete, delete, delete. God bless you, Ebony. Good morning. The, the era of social media has made it increasingly easy. Well, let's deal with social media. For people to hide behind their computer screen to hurl insults and jabs at people. And they do this every single day. And then when they do it, we know you're doing it to us. And there's no excuse for it. You're guilty of it and you know it. Throwing jabs at people they know or even don't know. Much of these insults are coming from the person's jealousy, which is based on their own feelings of inadequacy or dis dissatisfaction with their own lives. They take to social media and they have a protected platform by which they can insult others. My God, there is power in the delete button. If someone is saying something negative about you on your personal page or form, then delete their comments. If, their be, if their behavior uh, persists, then unfriend or block the person. You don't have to deal with that. Tell them goodbye because jealousy is a danger. Jealousy comes with hatred. Jealousy comes with murder. There's a spirit of murder that comes with jealousy. If their behavior persists and they're unf then unfriendly or block them, block them, block the person. If you don't have the ability to delete their comments, then block the person. So you don't have to be subject, subject to yourself to their comments. They will no longer be able to see you in 
or the online form so they will have to turn their jealousy comments and hatred towards someone else because they will. They will. You don't have to tolerate online bullies because that's what they are. They're bullies. They can't come to you and tell you how they feel. So what they do is they go on uh, uh, Facebook, they go on Instagram, they go online and they want to bully you with their insults because they can't see you getting blessed. Delete them to prevent yourself to be in further subject to someone else's jealousy that is based on their own insecurities. For example, when I first got uh, ordained as a pastor, it was in 2016. I didn't even say anything to anybody because honestly, I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't even, I wasn't ready for it. And I really didn't expect that. And I really didn't want it. I'm just going to be real. But God is the one that called me to it. So I can't deny God. I can't tell God I'm not going to do that. He did that. Not me. He did that. So for years, I didn't say anything. I kept on, I kept on, you know, I just kept on going. And I, I, I didn't say anything. I, I didn't mention to anybody that I had. Uh, I was a pastor back in 2016, De uh, December. It was December 2016, right before New Year's when God ordained me. I didn't say anything because... I already knew I already had haters and they already didn't like me. They already had things to say. So I didn't say anything. So in 2019, I believe it's 2019, 2020, I was reordained, but this time it was done. Pub, I was, it was done publicly in 2016, but this time it was done publicly on Facebook. Um, under pastor Relitra, uh, Britain. That's my, my pastor now. And before it was done under Teresa and um, Bishop. It was done under uh, Apostle Teresa Henry and um, Bishop Henry. I didn't say anything. I just, you know, and then when she, when it was done in 2019, then of course it was out there, but I still have people trying to say that I'm not a pastor. Okay. They have the nerve to say, oh, she's not a pastor, but I have licenses and documents to show you that I am a licensed pastor. I didn't license myself and I'm not the type of person that's going to get on here and say that I'm a pastor. Matter of fact, if you look at my Facebook, it doesn't say prophetess or pastor Rosemary Silva. It still says Rosemary Silva because I'm not into titles. So while you running around here telling other pastors that I'm not a pastor, you need to go and check out the documents and my, my, my licenses that says that I am. That means that you're still have some type of hatred and jealousy all over me for whatever reason. Cause I've never done anything wrong to nobody. I try not to, that's not my thing. I don't stay, I don't, I'm not on the phone gossiping to nobody. I stay off the phone and I stay off the radar because as a prophet, you shouldn't be on the phone talking to people anyway, because when God gives you something, you should be able to give it to them and not worry about, Oh yeah, you knew that because I told you that. So as a prophet and a pastor, you should stay close and you should stay, you, it's a lonely walk. Let me just say that. It's a lonely walk. But we don't have to tolerate bullies. Okay? I don't have to tolerate. Not only do I, I have a, a degree in paralegal, not a certificate, a degree. I have a degree in paralegal. I've, I've been to several colleges, universities for, uh, for, for the gospel. But I don't have to do this. But since you want to go around and telling people that I'm not a pastor, then I need to do this in public to let you know you're wrong. And the reason why I'm doing this is because God is allowing me to do it because I've been holding this for a while. Just because you don't like it and just because you don't accept it doesn't mean God didn't do it. Sorry, he didn't do it under you. You what? Why? Because you didn't know how to treat people and you still don't know how to treat people. Hey, I'm, I said it. You have my inbox. If you got a problem, you can call me, text me and tell me about it because you know who I'm talking to. Amen. God bless you. And I still love you. And I'm still praying for God deliverance for you. Now, I didn't come on here to say that, but God said it's time. It's time for you to shut your mouth. Stop judging people. Shut your mouth. Stop fighting against eagles' nests with your witchcraft and the, the, the warlocks that you got praying against the church. Stop it. 
And I hear God saying, this is your last warning. And I'm not going to call out your church because when you hear this, you're going to know who you are. God says, stop your hatred. Stop your jealousy because this is your last warning. Woo, Jesus, I feel the Holy Ghost. This is your last warning. There will be no more warning. You will begin to see the manifestation of your, your own words that you've spoken out. Delete them to prevent yourself from being further subject to someone else's jealousy that is based on their own insecurities. This is especially helpful if the person is not related to you or is simply an acquaintance. If it is a person in your life that you feel you cannot block or social media, then you need to talk to the person about the issue on head, head on. If you feel like someone is jealous about you, don't sit around and let it keep festering. Check it. God bless you, William. Check it. Check it. It's serious. Check it. There are times when you cannot delete or avoid the, the comments of a jealous individual. No matter how you try to discern the person by changing the subject, it doesn't stop them. In those situations, the best option is to talk with them about what's happening. And I'm going to say this because I feel the Holy Ghost. There's a lot of pastors are dealing with this. Okay. Jealousy because why? Because you're mad because they're, God called them. Well, you're, you're mad at them. You're, you're, you're mad at God because God is the one that called them. He's the one that appointed them and he's the one that put them where they're supposed to be. Who are you to tell somebody they're not a pastor or they qualify to be one? He don't have no respect to person. The same way he qualified you, he can qualify anyone he wants to. And then you go around poisoning people by telling people lies so they don't support you. But you're only bringing a curse on yourself. Do not approach them at any time when you are angry. Don't approach them. Such as when an altercation or bout of jealousy has just occurred. Talk to them when you can be completely calm, rational, and you know what you want to say. Because when you do it in anger, it might come out. You might just, you might just, you know, we, we saved and all that, but there's the, you push the button, you, you pull, you push, you know, you can't keep poking the bear. <laughs> the bear going to come out eventually. And then what people say, oh, she's not saved. She was never saved. No, we're saved, but we're human beings. We got feelings. When you cut us, we bleed. So if you want to keep pushing buttons and think that, that all the time we're supposed to be holy and just stay saved all the time. Uh, no, I'm just going to be real. This is called real talk. No, you're not going to keep poking me and dis misusing me, abusing me, and then turn around when I check you, you want to talk about, I am not saved. No, I'm saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, sanctified with the fire of God. But when you keep doing stuff, don't expect people not to re re react to your, your, your nonsense because they're going to. And they're going to still be saved afterwards. And you can call it what you want because that's what people do. Oh, they're not saved. Yeah, because you, cause you're because you God and you can tell people when they're saved and when they're not. Being judgmental. Have your comments ready before you approach the person so you know you're talking points and have thought about their possible reactions. Talk to them in a way that you would want to be talked to using kindness and empathy. Yeah, because they need it because insecurity and all that, they need empathy. For example, if your coworker is always calling out your mistakes in front of other, of your boss, then approach your uh, colleague by saying, what the, what, what, what's your, what's the problem? What, are you throwing me under the, bu the bus in front of the boss all the time? You know, you know, why are you doing it? Approach the person. In other words, don't approach the person like that. Approach the person in such a, a abrupt and rude way is likely to cause a defensive reaction that will be equally, if not more unkind. Instead, choose a kinder approach and you are more likely to get a response that seeks to understand where you are coming from. And they are also more likely to recognize how you are feeling. Such a statement 
you could use in um, use as an example would be I feel bad when you tell the boss things that I do wrong and it is affecting our work relationship which I want to be positive I want it to be a positive relationship and we have this happen we have this happen in, in a workplace where people um they see you they see that you work you're a hard worker they see that you're doing so good and they want to throw you under the bus they want to discredit you Taking on the issue of jealousy head on is especially important when it comes to family and close relationships. You want to improve those relationships. So let the person know that you are coming to them for that reason. Family members, family members are jealous. Remind yourself that it is them and not you. It's not you. You're not the problem. Take a step back and pause when you are getting treated unfairly because of someone else's jealousy. Remind yourself that it is not you that has the problem. It is them. Their jealousy and undermining issues are causing them to act this way. Try not to take it personally. It is easier said than done. Absolutely. It's easier said than done not to take it personally, especially when you, you've been real with a person and you, you really care about a person, but they're constantly, you know, throwing these darts at you. It's hard. Of course, we don't take it personally. It is easier said than done. But however, if you do pause and take this time to analyze why they may be acting jealous, you can begin to understand what may be motivating their behavior, which then makes it easier to digest the circumstances. If you have a family member who is jealous or your family vacations and makes rude comments about how much money you spend on your vacation, you can reflect on her life situation. Her husband is out of work and they are unable to take vacations. For the time being, she has jealousy that it is actually based in her in her own. Sadness that she can't take vacations like you are right now. Recognize that her feelings is of jealousy are actually rooted in sadness and not any actual hatred towards you can make you em emphasize with her life situation. Your reaction can thus be more empathetic for, towards her. Perhaps you realize you shouldn't talk about your vacation in front of her since it is a trigger point for her at this time. Life changes and someday they may be able to take a vacation again soon. When she comes to tell you about her vacation, then be the bigger person by listening, giving her positive response while she talks and restrain from telling about your latest vacation unless she's, she asks you for it. Because people get jealous. Being a bigger person is never easier, but with practice, it, it does come more naturally. What you will discover over time is that people... That people will naturally be more drawn to you when you are interested in talking about them and not yourself. Their jealousy will subdue because the focus has been turned towards the, the positive that is happening in their lives and not lack of their uh, because they are comparing themselves to you. Being the bigger person is especially important with family and close relationships. If you want your relationship to thrive, then show them that you love and care for them by take talking about the positive in their life and avoiding anything about your life that may trigger their jealousy. The less you talk, you can talk about yourself unless, uh, unless acts the better, especially, especially when it comes to someone who has jealousy issues with you. Disarm them with positivity. Disarm them. Knowing that that person is jealous, jealous, has a jealousy, is rooted in their own insecurity, self-doubt, and feelings of inadequacy can help you be more understanding and char change your reaction when someone acts out in jealousy towards you. If a friend makes jealousies, comments towards you be because of how perfect you, your home always looks, 
disarm them with positive comment. For example, you could be saying your garden is much prettier than mine. You certainly have a green thumb that I don't have. It's nice that we all have different strengths and abilities. And this is true because I've used this before. When someone said, oh, my house is so messy. I was like, girl, my house is messy sometimes too. There's no, I'm not looking at your house. See, mess. I'm here because I'm here because I love you. I'm here because I want to, I'm, I'm here to support you. I'm not here to look at what you got in your house and what you don't have in your house. It's not my business. Providing them with compliment and also not acknowledging that differences exist and that is normal and fine will help ease their own insecurities. You can complain, you can compliment someone into happiness, but you can help disarm their negativity comments that are rooted in jealousy if you provide them with positive feedback. For Ebony, I hear God saying they are envious of you. They're envious of the fact that you have a good husband. They're envious of you that you have a beautiful voice. They're envious of you because you love the Lord. And they're envious because they see that every time they try to break you down, they can't. This word is for Ebony. They are. It's a fact. It's real and it's happening. But because of the love that you have and the, the way that you respond back to them, it shuts them down. So you're blessed. You're blessed. It is not always easy to compliment someone, especially if it is someone that you're not close to or you do not find them very li likable. However, it is empowering to them and to you when you practice positivity. And, 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 and Ebony, that's you. It makes them feel better by helping them recognize the positive in themselves. And it will also make you feel good when you help them sometimes someone's day in life a little brighter. Words carry power. Being a positive influence in the world, especially when it comes to a person who feels like they are less than you, it is powerful force Help others to be better and do better by focusing on the positive, especially when negative com comments are coming your way. If you are if you are able to practice this method of disarming jealousy person, it will become easier and more consistent over time. You will find that they will in time return the favor with compliments towards you and others. Showing love and using positive words to encourage can be infectious. So spread it among many in your community and, and the world will become a better place. That is so true. Ignore and avoid. There is slim percentage of this world that simply does not change no matter what ta tactic you use to disarm or dis disengage their jealousy. Jealousy behaviors. These haters will hate you because you are too perfect. Then they will hate you on the next day because of your faults. So you can't please them. You can never do right by some people. These people, once you recognize who they are, should be limited or cut out of your life. You don't need someone who is continually trying to tear you down in your life. Their own insecurities may be so deeply rooted that only professional help will help change their ways. Their behavior it is and petting on your life and your attempts to make them stop have not worked allow you to cut ties with the individual with a more peace of mind there is no rule in life that says you have to be friends with every person you know or encounter there are some mean people in this world who will always be dissatisfied by their own life and thus insult and hate on others consistently don't get sucked into their drama and insults. Avoid them. Change jobs if the situation is severe enough that it is affecting your mental well-being and attitude in life. Because it, it will affect you after a while. You have control over your life and who you spend time with. Anyone who is continually hurling insults <clears throat> at you out of jealousy is not deserving of your time and energy. 
it is a family member, you can limit your time and exposure to the person. If you feel like you need to be around them in order to spend time with the whole family, then avoid direct interaction or make contact as brief as possible. If do if you do interact, remind yourself again that their comments are based on their own unhappiness in life and have nothing to do with you. You can control the way you cannot control the way they act, but you can control how you react to this person. Choose the higher ground, which is not reacting to their negativity, although it will still not be ple pleasant. Not giving them the satisfaction of seeing you upset can help you get over the situation more quickly and move on to the more pleasant people and conversations. Because exactly, they want to see you unhappy. They want to do this. It's like they're doing this on purpose. And go somewhere else in order to avoid their comments. Then do so because you don't want, you don't need to allow yourself to be subject to anyone's abuse. Because it's abuse. It is a, a definitely an abuse. Limit your exposure to such a person or cut them off, cut them out, um, cut them out entirely because you are worthy of loving relationship. There are many people in this world. You don't need stick with friends or relationships that are salt with insults based on based out of jealousy life is too short and there are plenty of people in this world who do need a good friend or relationship eventually people who are act this way out of jealousy will change if and when they realize nobody wants to be around that negativity now keep being you Sometimes having haters is a sign that you are doing things right in life and are successful. People who are jealous of you know that you are doing well and they want that for themselves. Rather than in investing their time in making their own lives better, they try to bring others down. Yeah, when they're talking about you and doing all this stuff with all your degrees and doctrines and all that, and, and, and you don't have nothing, you may not even have a GED, but they hating on you. They still want something you have. Jealousy. Jealousy. Rather than investing your time in making their, their, their um, making, making their their own lives, they better, um, they better, they try to bring you down. Their insults, criticism, and hate are directly at those who they know are better than them. So then, they try to look for faults in those people so they can think. They are better in one way or another. The jealousy is rooted in their own failures and adequacy in life. Don't allow these people to bring you down. Keep being you and keep being successful. Don't allow someone else's own failure to bring you down to prevent you from pursuing your dreams. Often having people that dislikes you in life is a sign that you are doing a lot right, which is exactly why people don't like you. You will never have favor with everyone you encounter with. People will dislike you, especially when you remind them of their own shortfalls or fallings. That's part of the deal in being successful. The more you will succeed, you will find you will become jealous. Uh, there are people that will become jealous and thus negative commentary will be coming your way. Do all that you can to avoid it. Disengage, disarm, ignore, or cut off these haters out of your life. However, it is not completely unavoidable. So when it does happen, don't allow the haters to stop you for what you are doing. Don't stop them. Don't let them stop you. Keep being you and remind yourself that their comments are based on their own failures and dissatisfaction with life and have nothing to do with is nothing to do personally. Now, you need to focus on relationships that are positive. You cannot make all people happy. There will, be, there will always be people who will be jealous or hateful to you. It does not matter who you are. Everyone has haters. Rather than focusing on changing these people to like you, focus your time and energy on those relationships that are encouraging you. There are plenty of people in this world who are good, positive, and loving. 
they sh they show love on show love to others in their relationships because they treat others how they also want to be treated. Invest your time and energy with the these type of people because they are all they are high value in your life. The haters should be kept at arm's length or further if possible. Don't allow the negativity from hateful, jealous people to have power over your life. Choose to be close to people who encourage and support you in your life. Be of encouragement to those you love to. You will see that their encouragement and love become increasingly symbolic, which can be empowering for everyone involved. Don't be like them. You determine who you allow to influence in your life. If you spend a great deal of time with someone who exhibits jealousy towards you, then you will not feel uplifted or encouraged. Seek out relationships in your life that uplift you, encourage you, and help you become a positive influence in the world. Relationships are powerful, so make sure yours are, yours are rooted in positivity, encouraging, and love. Forget the haters and deal with them only when needed. That's how you avoid them. You deal with them when, when, you, when it's needed to deal with them. You don't have to deal with them. You don't have to deal with them. And it's true. They throw stones. Okay, so I, I, I thank God for what he's doing. I thank God for his goodness and his mercy. I thank God he is a good God. But we got to deal with this stuff because if we don't deal with this stuff, we need to we need to make sure that we're not doing it. We really do. We need to make sure that we're not the ones at fault and we're not the ones that's doing this because we shouldn't. I, I, I woke up this morning. Like I said, I wasn't even coming to talk about jealousy. I was ready to talk about Deuteronomy 38. And the Lord said, no, we need to deal with the hatred and the jealousy. The jealousy is still going on in the body of Christ. There are ways. To deal with it, with it there are ways to deal don't be one of them don't be the victim and feel sorry for yourself this is the first foremost step take your own personal inventory and ask yourself if you have shrewd hate at someone you can undo what you have said or done in the past but you don't have to keep repeating it either it is up to you to deal with jealousy Deal with it. Don't be the victim and feel sorry for yourself. Don't give people a reason. Have contributed to the hate coming your way. Have you done something to draw negativity attention to yourself? None of us can claim moral perfection and learning how to deal with jealousy. It's important to take responsibility and make amends. Differentiality between hate and criticism. That this this along with being the victim. Criticism can be valid appraisal of your flaws and shortcomings. Properly delivered criticism is not an insult. It is an opportunity for self-improvement. Self-improvement. Recognize trolls. If the negativity is coming at you in, in the form of comments on the YouTube, Facebook, or other social media, understand who trolls are. Because that's what they do. They use... They use the platform Facebook. That, that's what Facebook has been used for now. To throw jabs at people because they can't come to you and tell you how they really feel. So what they do is they use Facebook, Instagram, and all of these things. Don't be like them. Be a real woman and a real man. Recognize that people who spew insults, threats, and personal attacks are damaged. They're damaged. I don't care if you're a leader and you're doing it. You're damaged. And you need to you need a, you need to look in the mirror and see what it what is what is bothering you. What what is this person doing to you that's bothering you so much that you're throwing jabs at them? It is not normal to shred other people. There is something wrong with trolls, bullies, and haters in general. Understand that they are badly damaged, pathetic, and have no other way of co connecting with other with people except to tear them down. They are in such pain. The only way they can feel better for a few minutes is out of the day is to put someone else down. And this is what is going on and is going on in church. And some leaders are doing it too. And think that God don't see you. He sees you. Is this happening in your workplace? 
This is a problem if there's a tri uh, tri triangular commun communication, meaning your hater is competing about complaining about you to the third party for every per perceived site. This can hurt your reputation at work, even the cost of your job. When somebody sees you doing good at, at work and you're and you're a hard worker, you don't miss no work and you come to work every day and they don't come and they, they come when they want to and they do this and this and that. What do they do? They're going to try to tear you down. Tear you down. Well, don't wait. Go to your supervisor or HR and let them know what is happening. You don't want the people above you buying into trivial, uh, malicious complaints. If you see somebody doing this, talking about, I don't want to go tell because then they're going to look at me like I'm a, I'm a tell, um, I tell on people. No, you better go say something before you don't have a job because your hater is trying to get rid of you. Um, they've been there longer than you, but you're doing more work than them and, and, and they're mad. An option to confront the hater is a meeting with management present to find out where they are coming from and if they have legitimate criticism or to expose their malicious behavior. If the people are ch uh, in charge are taking malicious complaints seriously instead of seeing them for what they are, you may be in a toxic work environment and might need to consider seeking new employment because it's not going to stop. Especially if the, if the people in charge are going along with it. Disconnect from people who are hateful and envious that are toxic. Sometimes this includes your own family member or people who have been friends with you. An alternative is to cutting them out of your life is to set limits and boundaries. Some people are best taken in very small doses. Don't internalize and accept the hatred. Don't let it get into your head and change how you feel your feel how you see yourself. Reframe the negativity and accept that you cannot please everyone nor should you try. Consider that it is good to have enemies as that means people are taking you seriously. Learn how to deal with jealousy different uh, is is difficult and unpleasant. People are people is a critical skill in the workplace and for life in general. It is. It requires work, and not to let negative people bring you down. Don't let them bring you down. Don't let them bring you down. Cause this morning God told me to do it. He said, "I want you to talk." He woke me up and told me hatred. I said hatred, and I I was up, and he was dealing with me about that. Told me to go on here, uh, and uh, and, and look up hatred, and it's not a good thing, you guys. It's not. It's not a good thing. God does not want this to go keep going on. We should not hate each other. For what? Why? Why? Why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? And you know, I always got to bring my, my, my scriptures. You know, I got to bring my scriptures. You know, I always got to bring my scripture. I'm going to take a few minutes and bring my scriptures in here. About hatred. Because I always back everything up with the scriptures. Because if the word of God is not in it, then what's the word? What's the reason for trying to change, right? The Bible talks about hatred. 2 Samuel 13 and 15. Then Ammon hated her with a very great hatred. For he, the hatred with which he hated her was greater than the love with which he had loved her. And Ammon said to her, get up and go away. Titus 3 and 3, for we also once were foolish ourselves, disobedient, deceived, enslaved to various lusts and pleasures, spending our life in malice and envy, hateful, hating one another. His brother, Genesis 37 and 4, his brother saw that their father loved him more than all the other brothers. And so they hated him and could not speak to him on friendly terms. We have people doing that right now, today. Deuteronomy 7 and 15. The Lord will remove from you all sickness and he will not put on you any of the harmful diseases of Egypt, which you have known, but he will lay them on all who hate you. Deuteronomy 19, 11 and 12. But if there is a man who hates his neighbor and lies and wait for him, and raises up against him and strikes him so that he dies and he flees to one of the, the cities. Then the elders 
the elders of the city shall send and take him from there and deliver him into the hand of the avengers of blood that they may that that they may die god does not take hatred lightly judges 11 and 7 then jesweth said to the elders of gilead did you not hate me and drive me from my father's house so why have you gone to me now when you are in trouble now ain't this what they do now when they in trouble they want to they want they want you to pray they want you to fast they want you they want you to they want you to do a whole lot when when they in trouble come on now we we got to get it together second samuel 13 and 22 but absalom did not seek did not speak to a a ma'am either good or bad for Absalom hated Ahab because he had violently or violated his sister T Tamara. I believe he raped her. Psalms 25, 19, look upon my enemies for they are many and they hate me with violent hatred. Psalms 38, 19, but my enemies are vigorous and strong and many are those who hate me wrongfully. Hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all transgressions. Matthew 24 and, 9, and 10. Proverbs 10 and 12. I'm sorry, I didn't read that one. I read it, but I didn't give you the, the Proverbs 10 and 12, which says hatred stirs up, uh, stirs up strife, but love covers the, uh, all transgression. Matthew 24 and 10. At time, many will fall away and will betray one another, hate one another. The Bible talks about it. Galatians 5, 19 and 20. Now the deeds of the flesh are a, uh, evident, which are immorality, in, impurity, sexuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, disputes, dissensions, and factions. 1 John 2, 9 and 11. The one who says he is in the light and yet hates his brother And hates his brother. Is in the darkness until now. So if you say you love your sisters and brothers. And you really don't. You're just saying it. But in your heart you don't. You in the dark. The one who loves his brother abides in the light. And there is no cause of, for stumbling in him. But the one who hates his brother is in the darkness. And walks in darkness. And does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. 1 John 3 and 15. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. And who know that no murderer has eternal life, has eternal life abided in him. Wow. Even if you don't murder them physically, you're murdering them emotionally. And it says that you are a murderer and you will not enter or abide eternal life. 1 John 4 and 20. If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For the one who does not love his brother whom he has seen, but cannot love God whom he has not seen. Psalms 81, 15. Those who hate the Lord would pretend obedience to him. And their time of punishment will be forever. Romans 1, 29 and 31. Being fulfilled with all unrighteousness, wickedness, greed, evil, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, malice. There are gossipers, slanders, haters of God, insolent, arrogant, boastful, in inventors of evil, disobedient to parents without understanding, untrustworthy, unloving, and unmerciful. That's what hatred is talking about, and it's in the Bible. And I always, I always make sure that when I'm on here that I back up everything with the word of God with the with the scriptures. I don't I never come on here without making sure making sure that it's backed up with, with God's word. Because if it doesn't back up with God's word, it, 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 I'm just wasting time sitting up here blowing hot air. And that's not what God sent me here to do. 
and I'm going to, um, it's, it's almost, it's almost, um, okay, we got five minutes, so <clears throat> you guys, excuse me, I always read cancel and negative words over us in the beginning, but this morning I didn't, I waited to do it at the end, so I'm going to read this over us, and I do this every single day, because we need to do this every single day, we need to put the armor of God on every single day, Lawrence got it up about the truth, breastplate of righteousness, feet shot with the preparation of peace, shield of faith, helmet of salvation, sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Putting on the whole armor that we be able to stand against the wiles of the enemy. We must do this every single day because the enemy is looking to come after us every day. He doesn't take a break. So we shouldn't take a break. Cancel negative words spoken into our lives. Limitations 3 and 37, numbers 23 and 8. Blood of Jesus Christ, wash us and make us whole. Maker and Father, we have, have mercy on us and deliver us from every satanic pronouncement. Our, our God and our Father, arrest and paralyze every evil tongue raised against us. Holy Ghost fire, locate and paralyze every tongue pulling us down. Holy Ghost fire, paralyze every evil word program until the sun, moon, stars to limit our destiny. Holy Ghost fire, paralyze every witchcraft word issued to reduce our life. Every word that's coming from anyone will never make it in life. Receive fire and be canceled. Every word spoken by any man or woman that is speaking against us will never make good life. Receive fire and be canceled. Every word spoken by any of our relatives to keep us in the place of, uh, in, in a, a Elevator said to keep us in one place, receive fire and break and scatter in the name of Jesus. Every evil word issued against us in the night to limit our life, receive fire and be canceled. Every evil word issued in the day to limit us, receive fire, break and be canceled. Every curse issued on us by our mother or father, receive fire, break and be released now. Holy Ghost fire, break and scatter every word limiting us from our place of birth, I release ourselves from every evil issued against us from our father's house. Whosoever that is renewing evil words against us day and night, receive stones of fire, be exposed and be wiped away. Every witchcraft pronouncement made against our destiny, receive fire, scatter to pieces. Every occult decree, raised to pull us down, scatter and be canceled. Oh Lord, my father, arise and let your plan and your words stand in our lives. Every word spoke by the strong man of our father's house against our life, break and be canceled. Every evil word that is limiting us, your time is over. Receive fire and be canceled. They that are waging war against our greatness, Holy Ghost fire, blood of Jesus, pull them down. Every word spoken and sealed with any blood against our destiny. Receive fire and break and scatter every secret word and embargo. Tie it us down, break and scatter to pieces. Holy Ghost fire, locate and wipe away any personality cursing, cursing us day and night. We back, we, we fire back to senders every evil word, decision raised against us this day. Blood of Jesus, cancel every spoken word or written to stand against our life. Every evil pronouncement blocking any open door or written to stand against our life. Every Every evil word blocking the open door, receive a fire and be wiped away. Oh, Lord, our father, open our great doors and restore our glory to us this morning. By your power, oh, Lord, we reposition ourselves for excellence. Our maker and our father rewrite every statement concerning our destiny. Prophesy these words to you every day. Every day, find some time to just say good things about yourself. Find scriptures of who you are and speak these scriptures over yourself. To, the, to your glory, O oh Lord, I must become who you created me to be. We must become who he created it to be. And then something the Lord shared with me this morning too. He said, people have tickling ears. And you notice how when somebody's prophesying, you get about a hundred and something people. They want to hear prophecies. Their, their ears is so, they just want to be, they just want to hear a word. But when, it, when, when someone is teaching and trying to teach you something or trying to teach you how to pray yourself so you can learn, so you don't have to depend on other people all the time because there's people that's not going to be around all the time, then nobody wants to do it. They don't want to come. But if I was here for an hour prophesying, or profit line or making up stuff, I will have over a hundred people right now listening. But I ain't that type of person. If God don't give me a word, you're not getting one. And I ain't making up one to make your flesh happy. But because I'm here teaching and trying to help you learn how to pray, because the Lord taught me all these things, I didn't ask for this. I didn't even know I was going to be on this platform. I didn't even know I was going to be doing this. 
I was happy being an intercessor sitting in the back of the church. I had no idea that I was going to be put in this situation to be on this platform to do what I'm doing right now. All of this time that I've been learning, I've been reading and, and I've been just collecting all these prayers and just, this is how I got through all my, a lot of battles. I didn't know that God, and I was saving him and I didn't know how I was saving him. Now I know why, because God wants me to, what, what he put, put in me, he wants me to give it out to you now. So you can learn how to get through. How to how to how to uh, protect yourself from witchcraft? How to protect yourself from negative people, from from jealousy and hatred? Because it's happening. But if you pray every day and you cover yourself, you won't feel it as bad as if you don't pray. So I'm not here for show. I'm here because God told me to be here. But I'm not gonna sit here. And, and like the Lord told me this morning, people are, are, are want to hear prophecies. They want to get their ears tickled. They want to hear a word from the Lord every day. Well, you can hear a word from God when you open up your Bible and read it. Ask God for a word and then open your Bible and see what page it falls on. He might want, there's times where I say, God, I don't, I don't know what to do. Show me what to do. I open up my Bible, wherever it fell on. Maybe there's a scripture in one of those pages that God will lead you to so you can read it and find out what, he's, what, what he wants you to know. Period. Stop going to people. You think everybody's praying for you? You think everybody who's asking to pray for you is praying for you? News flash. They might be praying. They might be praying. P-R-E-Y. On you. Learn how to pray for yourself. Learn how to pray for yourself. You don't want to always think that somebody's praying for you because it's not always true. Yeah, and I'm saying it because I've experienced it. I don't know about anybody else, but I'm talking about me. I experienced it. Okay, so if you pray for yourself and you and you in the word of God every day, you're covered. You don't have to worry about if somebody's praying for you or not because you're already prayed. Like every single day when I come down here, I feel so good. Let me tell you, the attacks ain't been as bad. Why? Because I make sure I cancel every witchcraft pronouncement over my life every single day. Every word being pronounced against me is going back to the sender or back to the pits of hell for where it came. I'm surrounded by prayer on a daily basis. And guess what? It's helping me. And why are you here? And it's helping you because you're receiving the word of God. And the word of God says it will not return to him. It will not go out and return to him void. It will go out and accomplish that which is sent it out to do. So every word that's been spoken is going to bless you. And then if you want to hear the prayers and you don't remember what I prayed, you can always go back to the, to the, to the uh, recording and you can hear the prayers. You could cover yourself that way. That's what I used to do. There's lots of ways to be victorious, you guys. And the only way I know how to be victorious is through the word of God. And the Lord even gave me the, the he even gave me, the, he even gave me, I'm going to share with you guys because you guys are always here and you guys are always faithful. I don't know if it's going to change, but God gave me the name for my church. Deliverance through God's word, international ministry. Delivering through God's word, international ministry. Because how do we get delivered? Through God's word. God's word is what's going to set us free. His word. His word is a roadmap. His word has everything we need. So I don't know if he's going to change it, but this morning I was just, you know, and he gave me that word. Deliverance through God's word and to national ministry. Because if the word of God can deliver you, then what? Because even when we're going through deliverance, we still have to use the word of God. Them, them spirits are not subject to us. They're subject to the word of God. They're subject to the word of God. That's what they're subject to, his word. Amen. God bless you guys. I love you guys. I pray God's blessings over you this morning, today. I pray Psalms 91 over you guys. Um, Let me just pray that real quick. Let me find that scripture because... Since every time I do any type of, of uh, warfare like that, I always like to pray the Psalms over you guys just because Psalms will keep you protected and it doesn't matter. And I, I want to pray this real quick over you guys and then we'll be 
seeing you guys tomorrow. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisy pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that waiteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come thee nigh thee. Only with thy eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. They shall tread upon the lion and the udder and the lion and the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample underfoot because he hath set his love upon me. Therefore will deliver him and I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him and I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. Would I satisfy him and show him my salvation? Amen. God bless you guys. Thank you for being here. Um, thank you for being so supportive. Like I said, it's a sacrifice coming here every morning. It is a sacrifice. I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I'll be like, oh, Lord, I don't even want to get up. But it's a sacrifice. And this is what he commanded me to do. And this is what I'm going to do. And I pray that you guys are blessed this today. God bless you. God bless you. You guys at 12 o'clock, Pastor uh, Apostle, Pastor, Apostle, Pastor Roberts is going to be... Um, Noonday prayer today at 12 noon, everyone. So come out and hear what uh, Pastor uh, Roberts have to say, what God has to say through him. He's a great man of God. So come out and hear him today. Amen. God bless you guys. God bless you guys. I'll see you guys in the morning. Don't know what God has for me to say in the morning, but whatever he decides to say, that's what we're going to do. Amen. God bless you.